So welcome back. So let's, uh, you mentioned about psychiatry station. Let's do depression together. All right, so depression, it's, it's really important for the patient to tell them that you have the depression, they have to have the symptoms. Most of the times, most days for at least two weeks. This is how we diagnose the, uh, depression. Like if the patient tell you I'm really low, my mood is zero, still you can't tell them you have depression unless they have these symptoms most of the days for at least two days, uh, two weeks. So at least two weeks, they have these kind of symptoms and, and the major, uh, or two main symptoms uh, you will ask during the last month how often uh, sorry just to mute yourself during the last month have uh, have you often been bothered by feeling down or feeling depressed or hopeless the meaning is, uh, you can choose any word of them but uh, or uh, have you, or you can ask directly have you been um, uh, uh, by any chance, are you feeling down? Uh, if she said yes, say for how long, since when? So we need just to, to, to know the start of symptoms because it has to be for two weeks. If not for two weeks, it, it not necessarily be depression. It could be just low mood for certain uh, incident. For example, uh, we have the station, the, the lady that who cut her wrist, and uh, when you ask her about her mood, she will tell you very low when or whatever, but she doesn't have a uh, depression. It's just because she had a problem on the same day with, with uh, her partner. She discovers that she's pregnant and she called her partner and he told her that he, he, he doesn't want to have any more relationship with her. And she felt very low and she brought some knife and cut her wrist. So Hello. Yes. yes, yes. So, so Afal, sister, uh, if it is more than uh, two weeks, then it is a case of depression. Yeah, at least two weeks. Yeah. And okay, if it is greater than two weeks. Yeah, it has two to weeks. be. Or else, it could be a something low. It could be a something uh, low mood. Uh, in between the very recent event, for example, any anything happened in her life that is. Uh, uh, making her down, then I will call it is a low mood station, isn't it? Yeah, but it's still like she could develop depression in the future, like this low depression, mood. Depression, okay. Yeah, no, okay. no, like, no, you made the right point, like, just we will say depression if it at least the symptom continues for two weeks. Uh, but uh, anything okay. else could be low mood, as you said, but this low mood can develop into depression because, for example, this lady, okay. she had a uh, uh, she found herself uh, pregnant with her, with her boyfriend, so she might mm -hmm. continue to have depression. Like this low mood will continue with her for the next month or more. So we okay. still we need to follow up on her. We still we need to uh, offer her CBT. But the idea is we just we can't name it depression because this is according to certain mm -hmm. incident and short period. So. Okay, okay, sister. Yeah. So just we have to ask these uh, questions like have you uh, like uh, it shouldn't be exactly same question but it has to lead to the exactly same answer like uh, have you uh, bothered by feeling down or you can ask straight away how is your mood and and okay. after like, am I allowed to scale it am I allowed yes, to scale yes, it for yes, example how is yeah, yeah. your mood one being the lowest ten being the highest how much would you score. Yeah, so first you will ask, how is your mood? If they said it's fine, that's it, don't score it. If he said, uh, okay. doctor, I really feel very low, so now you can score it. So just on a scale of one to 10, uh, yeah, same, like one is the least and, and 10 is the highest, happiest. But still, be careful, uh, scoring the mood is not necessarily be, be true number. Like even if she told you my mood is zero, it, it might not be having depression. So it, we just ask it for the sake of ask, asking, but to, to classify the severity of depression, we have certain, I will show you now criteria to follow. It's not about scoring the mood. So even if you said you, my mood is one, it's not necessarily to be extremely bad mood. mean that is in depression. Yeah, because anyone feel low, she will tell you. Have... Yes. 
So if I ask you, for example, how is your mood, you'll tell me is rubbish, is is very bad. But we don't have any depression. You was laughing one year, uh, yeah. one minute earlier. But it's kind of we answer all of us when we ask someone how is how low is your mood. If at this moment they don't feel okay, they can give you a very low uh, number. But we don't yeah. rely on this number. Yeah, just you can ask it for the sake of asking. Uh, do do you have little interest or pleasure in doing things like if you're uh, if she said my mood is fine, that's it is finished. But if her mood is low, so we will ask uh, about uh, can you score the mood and also we will ask since when since when you have been feeling low. So duration. And also like any symptoms in Bilab to any symptoms psychiatry, even if it is you mentioned earlier about uh, gender dysphoria, for example. All of them, like just the patient tell you about feeling, whatever, anywhere they telling you, elaborate it in the same like symptoms, just in Odibar, like when did it start? How did it start? Did it, uh, has it been getting worse since it started? And uh, anything makes these symptoms or feeling better, anything makes this feeling bad. So you can elaborate the same, like when did it start? Has it been continuous or comes and goes? Anything spine can make, make it better or worse, yeah. So you can still elaborate whatever the patient's saying, symptoms, feeling, anything, you can elaborate it same way. Do, do you have little interest or pleasure in doing things? So if the patient having depression, so they lose interest in doing the things that they normally would enjoy doing, like going out with friends, watching TV, whatever. They feel that they want to do nothing. This is like main symptoms. This is two one I, I put with the arrow is the uh, two main symptoms. They have to be most of the time for at least most of the days for at least two weeks. So this is, we will, we will tell this patient has depression. And there is other associated symptoms with depression. You, you can also continue at your history. Like uh, how often do you experience these symptoms? Any sleep problems, uh, appetite, energy problem like uh, loss of energy, poor concentrations and feeling worthless. Okay, or suicidal thought, of course, we're going to, but after elaborating depression, we need to ask about suicide. So this kind of any depression stage, any psychiatry station, you're going to ask about this. If it is not depression station, so the patient will tell you my mood is fine, so you don't need to continue about the other symptoms. But if the patient tell you I, I feel low, so we'll continue scoring the mood since when, and you can do all of the bar question if you want to. And then uh, do, you, uh, do you have little interest or pleasure in doing things? And ho how often do you have these symptoms? Like per day or per week, so it just will assess the severity. And any sleep problem, what about your appetite, fatigue, and concentrations? And extremely important to ask about suicide because if the patient has suicide risk, we need yeah. to admit. And I need to admit it until the admission. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, Apa, if it's a case of, for example, uh, if the patient has the insight, for example, do you think that you need help? I have asked him the question. And uh, or he comes to the hospital all by himself, then uh, do I need to admit or do I need to give him in the observation? Any suicidal risk, you will admit for safety. Okay. Even and if, if he has he, the insight? Yeah, even if they have insight, even if they told you, I don't, uh, I don't uh, have suicidal risk, you need to make sure it, it, uh, they don't have it. So you will ask them again, uh, what keep you from harming yourself. So this is like red flag. Mm -hmm. Like we know in, in all Bilab Twist station, you have to know, uh, pick, out, uh, pick up the red flag things. And like, if there is any emergency things, you have to address it uh, mm -hmm. yeah, to show that you are safe doctor. So uh, for, for depression station, we have to ask about suicidal risk. We will ask straight away, like, uh, do you have any thought about uh, harming yourself or- Harming yourself. Harming yourself. Yeah, I, I'm making it in the. Do we do we will you ask it directly or just I will sign post or do something like that? Do I need so to if, do if the patient has very low mood, so it it, it does no harm to ask them. Or if 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 you feel like it could be intimidating, you can ask. 
uh, like uh, some people, when they feel very low, they can think about harming themselves. What about you? Is it the case for you? So you can ask for it. Okay. Okay. Uh, for example, our uh, uh, sister, if it is like that, she was being, she's been admitted and she has cried once. Uh, she was there is a depression, patient of depression. She's been admitted to the hospital. Right now she has come for the consultation with me to explore the things. Sorry, is your sound in the end, I couldn't. Uh... What's the question? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, for example, yeah. uh, the patient is already admitted in the hospital. Yeah. Okay, patient is in the, uh, admitted in the hospital. She is already admitted. And now uh, my senior has told me to call, uh, see this patient. Yeah. He's a, he was a patient of depression as well as uh, he has this uh, now, but he, uh, he was admitted because of suicidal tendency. For example, he cut his wrist. Or uh, he tried to uh, take, took, he, she took paracetamol. Mm. Okay, overdose. Now she was admitted. Now I'm going to the patient. And uh, uh, now I can see that she doesn't, or he doesn't have that. He does have the insight. And he, sorry, he's saying me that he doesn't, will not commit suicide again. Then what should I do? What should be the management in this case? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, talking about insight so if if like all psychiatric problem if they have insight about their condition it, it still it will not uh, it will not make the decision different the most important things we in yeah, all yeah. psychiatric station we have some criteria to admission for example in depression if there is any risk of suicide if there is suicide yeah. in the past or 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 currently she has suicide or if there is any chance she going to do it again, even if the patient said no, we still will admit. Uh, uh, for example, okay. if the patient has psychosis, we will admit. If the patient has schizophrenia, we will admit. So this is kind of things we're going to admit for. So in this station, like uh, uh, just you reminded me by like, if even if your senior told you or in the task told you this patient had uh, whatever, even if they told uh -huh. you to diagnose this outside, is still, as a junior doctors, you have to start from scratch, like ask the history and everything, even if you know the station, like even like outside, they told you your senior already spoke to this and told you this patient has depression. So it's still, I will start from the, what brought you to the his, uh, hospital, what symptoms you have, like same structure, we'll go through symptoms and past medical history and everything. Yeah, so we're going to admit, uh, like if the patient told I don't have, suicide risk at all. I feel, I feel guilty because I did this and I'm not going to do it again. So I will ask again, what keeps you from harming yourself? Because your job is to make sure 100% she's not going to do it again. So what keeps you from harming yourself? So she might tell you, I have bright future ahead uh, or whatever. So if it made it clear she will never do it, that's fine. You can, you can, you can discuss. But if there is any suspicion that she might do it, even if she said, I'm not going to do it. Like for example, she told you, I, if you ask her what keeps you from harming yourself, she told you, I don't know, I, I think I know now, but uh, I'm, uh, I think I'm not going to do it. I think I'm not going to do it. So still you need to admit. I think, if she told, I think. She yes. told, I think. I think means that there are some possibilities of doing that again. So yes. if I can just, if I can understand that there is a list of possibility that uh, she will do it again, then I have to keep her admitted, or else uh, I can uh, observe and let her go, isn't it? Exactly. And and always, like, if you are if you are not sure to admit or not to admit, admit. Because your job to okay, be a senior. senior. Yeah, you have to be as and consult your senior, yeah, because you are you have to be safe doctors. Because if you admit, if you discharge a patient, uh, it's it, you will be unsafe doctors. And the other things. All discharge decision is going to be made, uh, made by consultant. This is a reality. So okay, okay. this is the important thing. All discharge yeah. decision by consultant. By consultant. So you just tell her, uh, yes, we may consider discharging you if you are safe to go home. But uh, firstly, I need to discuss it with my senior. I will double check with my senior. Okay, I will double check with my senior. Yeah, yes. and I will let you know. In the yes. meantime, would you mind waiting? Yes. So that exactly. I just make sure that she is safe. Exactly, exactly. Okay, thank you, sister. Well, yeah. well sister, there was uh, 
if it is a case of telephonic yeah, and for example the patient is having a acute psychosis for example he is saying that he is the spy recently there was a station one of my friends gave the exam he told me that there was a station that she she the uh, his uh, patient's mom for example jack jack's mom is worried about jack and because uh, jack has some issues then when jack came to meet me in the i mean i'm in the uh, like i'm in the jeep uh, gp fy2 gp and he told me he tells me that he is working as a spy for the united kingdom and i can uh, understand that uh it was a telephonic and i can understand that the patient is hallucinating what should be the management in this kind of cases all right so before we move to 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 psychosis just let's finish depression okay okay quickly and i will answer okay, the sister, okay, okay. no problem yeah okay, so this you. is a questionnaire bh um q questionnaire you already asked a question in it in your history but just when you get to the to the investigation part or after examination you need to mention about this so if telephonic you will tell the patient i will um, if like depression station it's not necessary in everything but mm -hmm. if it's the station purely depression so you can ask her i will give you um, self um, assessment questionnaire just to fill in and it will decide the severity of depression because the management depends on the severity so this like just they will fill this uh, you can it's not clear here but you can see it in your whatsapp material so uh like for example if the score 5 10 or 15 uh and 20 point is uh, for mild and uh, moderate like 5 mild and, and 15 moderate and 20 severe uh, 15 severe and 20 very severe. So, but you don't need to remember the number for sure, but the idea is severity of depression, we decided upon this questionnaires. And if the depression is mild, we can just give CBT. And if it is moderate or severe, we'll give CBT plus antidepressant medication. The GB can treat, or you can refer to the specialist, specialist both of them fine. So uh, regarding psychosis, uh, so uh, the idea is uh, if it is telephonic and you is speaking to the patient mm -hmm. and the patient who is the one talking to you, so if, if you just do full assessment and you have the, the psychosis question as well to ask like hallucination and, uh, and all mm -hmm. these symptoms. So if the patient has psychosis, you will tell them, I will, uh, is it okay to speak to your next of kin? Because now the patient, this patient is not... Um, it doesn't have any mental capacity. She has hallucination and these things. It's unsafe for them to be alone. It, it, they need to be admitted to the hospital. So you will ask, and you can't discuss management plan of, with them. So you need to ask next. Uh, ask yes, them. yes, that's the problem. For example, uh, what happened? Uh, I was practicing with one of them. And if I say that the patient is having psychosis and then he reacted that, well, you want to mean me that I am, I'm a pem, I am a mad. I'm, 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 I'm a psychotic, so I'm not allowed to even tell the diagnosis to him. So what should I do in this kind of regard? I can see that he's in the telephonic station or even I'm not allowed to tell him the diagnosis. How should I do the management and make yes, him so, it? Yes, so in the management part, I will, I, I, before I discuss the management, you can ask, is it okay? Is it okay to get mm -hmm. to your next of kin? So in the history, in the social history, you will ask, who are okay. you who is? and uh, at home, like who lives, whatever they live with them is home. And is it okay mm -hmm. to speak to them as well about your problem or not? So if they said, okay, so say I will, I will um, arrange an appointment for both of you, or if it is like psychosis need now admission, need to be admitted now. So you need to, uh, is it, is your mom here? I would need to speak to her just to discuss with her the management uh, plan because, so obviously that she will not pass you to, to your mom, to his mom, but you will, mm -hmm. you are telling the examiner that what in your head. So because uh, we may need to admit you to the hospital for further assessment because the, the fact that you're seeing, for example, people, he, he will be having sight about his hallucination, tell you, for example, uh, like he sees, uh, or hear people and anyone else disagree with him. 
So just we will uh, like just you bring these symptoms again about hallucination and tell them because you seeing and hearing people that uh, other people disagreeing with you. So we need to make sure that we don't have any mental issues that could cause these symptoms because if the like sometimes just infection can cause this hallucination. So we will do full investigation. Okay, just to be on the safe side. Okay, be on the safe side. No, but okay. it's still like hallucination. It could be, uh, uh, in addition to the psychiatry, it could be sepsis, it could be any kind of infection. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so we will tell him, we will tell him like now, I'm discussing the management, not for the patient, but for the examiner to, to because he will not give you his mom to continue talking with her. But uh, you, you send the message to the examiner that because it recorded, they will listen to you, we'll see what you're doing. So you send the message to the examiner that you're going to get his family involved. In the real life, you are not going to discuss the management with the patient, or at least with the present with the relatives. So just you told when before you discuss any further after you finish the history, you you will tell the patient like, is it okay to get your next of kin involved? So now you are in the safe side. Just you need to show off. You know what next step. So you will tell him. Okay, uh, so I'm not going to tell him the management. So what I'm going no, to no, do you will is tell, it okay? You will tell in details everything. You will tell. You will tell in details in okay. everything. You already, like, the idea is we, we need to respect them as human beings and we will explain to them all everything. And we don't, we will not assume that they are not going to, 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 to remember the information you're giving them, whatever. But the ideal thing to be safe, we need to get their family member involved and we need to ask their family member to take them to the host, hospital straight away to, 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 to receive further plan of management. So at this point, you will, you will mention it first and then you will continue discussing with the patient all steps of management as if he's a perfect man, no problem. So we'll tell him, uh, so I will, I will uh, like you will start, yes, I will get your uh, family, your parents, for example, your mom involved if you don't mind, because we need to bring you to the hospital straight away to do for further investigation. Uh, so the symptoms you mentioned, it could be caused by infection. So we will run some blood test and some, we may need to do some further uh, imaging if, if needed to find out what, what causing your problem. And also we'll ask my colleagues to assess your, uh, your mental health uh, further if that's okay by you and to find out what exactly causing your problem. So you explain all the management to the patient because you can't stop the patient here. And anyway, in the real life, yeah. it's what we do. Like uh, now in the hospital, I have patients with some cilicia. We will tell them everything. I know he will forget in one second, but we will tell them we need to do this. We need to get the mental team involved. Is that okay? He say yes, yes, so oh, no problem. No problem. Yeah, even if the patient has schizophrenia or whatever. And the GMC said like, for example, any patient with disability, he said never assume they, they don't have uh, enough mental capacity. Always. Mental capacity. Always treat them as 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 normal human being. Like uh, tell them, just use simple language. Try to explain things. Uh, even you can repeat yourself and explain to them in a very simple language. But treat them like they they understand everything. Even if they didn't understand, because you wouldn't know. Just explain everything to them, and then get their family member involved to to make sure uh, whatever your message is being um, understood clearly. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is other station who you need to speak to the mother about uh, her son who has psychosis as well. So this is station. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is station uh, is still exactly the same station, just the English you will use, you need to use third part, like uh, does he, does he, does he, does he have this, does he have this? Has he ever been experiencing this? But it will be exactly the same symptoms you are asking about, you have hallucination and everything you will ask. Uh, but the problem is like, we you can't give information without consent. So- uh, Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so what, you, what you're doing, like in all station, if you, or, or the one he asking about COBD, her daughter taking contraceptive pill. So no problem is, is just you keep asking, 
like instead of volunteering any information from your your head ask them ask them you can ask them all the symptoms like uh, have you ever uh, see her behaving like this have you ever noticed these symptoms on her have you ever it doesn't matter you you didn't break their confidentiality you asking them they're giving you information so it's still you can run the station it's mostly no problem you are not giving anything from your head you asking them maybe if it is depression when you reach the diagnosis you are not going to tell the mom is is depression you just ask her uh, please uh, bring your daughter with you to the clinic so I can arrange appointments for her to do further assessment. But if it is psychosis or schizophrenia, now they lack in mental capacity and the mother is next of kin. Yes. You can uh, tell them everything so, else, diagnosis and medication. So is, if it is a case of, so when I can find that the patient doesn't have the mental capacity, then uh, our mother is mother or next of kin or whoever she is has the ability, uh, has the right to know about the condition. Yes, exactly, yeah. And if she, uh, if the patient doesn't have the mental capacity, uh, then she is allowed to have. And, and, and if the patient has the capacity, for example, uh, it could be low mood, but she's having the capacity. It could be a patient, of, for example, she's having OCP. She's taking it, but I'm not allowed to say to his mom because the patient has the mental capacity. She's even, she, she could be a 15-year-old girl, isn't it? Yeah, I will just gen, I will just ask or I will just uh, try not to uh, breach the patient confidentiality. When she is having a la uh, the, uh, she doesn't have it, then I will let her know, isn't it? Yeah. So yes, you will keep asking. For Thank example, you. say the contraceptive pill station. So she wants to know if mm. if if they give you prescribe. Uh, contraceptive bill or yeah. not. Yeah, so you will ask, you will tell her, uh, um, uh, I don't have any access for your daughter record at the, uh, the moment, but if you don't mind me, oh, you keep asking her, like, did you, uh, what happened? Did you see any bills in her rooms? Did she have any symptoms? Whatever, you can ask as much question as you want to help you address this mother concern without breaking any confidentiality. You are asking, you are not volunteering any information, so no problem, yeah. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, depression. What's the other one? Other guy. He left, yeah. The B network. Okay. All right. Okay. So yeah, one point about the psychiatry station, it doesn't work like normal yeah, internet. The structure. Like, you yeah. can't ask them and expect answer from them. So it's kind of chatting with them, it's kind of uh, like doing informal conversation and let them speak to you and tell you the story because they will be in very low, low mood. They don't want medical interview. Like, do you have any headache? Do you have any this? They are not going to- They will not responsible. Yes, for example, the like to do this station, the patient who cut her wrist. Let's do it now. Okay, and then we can comment later. So do you know the station? So the station is um, like uh, 27 years old, um, female, any mm -hmm. name. Uh, so she has been brought to the hospital after cutting her wrist today. And uh, all medical treatment has been done. So now they need you to do full psychiatry uh, station. So always in a psychiatry station, they will tell you the medical part has been done, do full psychiatry assessment because they don't want you to waste your time. So you don't need you to ask about uh, uh, medical question or past medical history. So they need you to be focused psychiatry rather than medical. So do I need to do mental, mental MMSC test? In depression, no. It, it, no, it comes... In some cases. No, no, it's, it's only in... in, in uh, we have only one station, as the patient who wandering in the park, uh, so he had hallucination or maybe drug overdose, whatever the case is, 
So uh, they ask you clearly to do mini mental state examination. And we have dementia. You are not going to do it. Just you will tell the patient, I, I want to do it for you. So mm -hmm. she will tell you the number straight away. So she will tell you the nurse already did it for you. Okay, okay. They will tell me the number. They will tell you the number. In, in, in dementia station, we have another station you have to do it fully. And the station just about this mini mental state examination. So uh, the station is just about to do this. So, and, and they not bringing it just much like, I think, I don't remember anyone said it's coming for the past few months. But anyway, even if it came, it's just about my mental state examination because it's very lengthy, you can't finish on time. So it, it, it wouldn't be any.